Hey everybody. Today we're talking about critical points and extreme values of functions. One of the most important things about the derivative is that it lets us optimize things. And this is hugely important in the real world. For instance, a company might want to maximize its profits, or an airline might want to minimize the amount of fuel required on its flights. Or an industrial designer might be asked to minimize the amount of material needed in a product's packaging. So we'd like to address questions like this from a mathematical perspective. Before we can really do that effectively, however, we have to be more specific about what we mean by the words maximize and minimize. So let's look at a graph. Here's a function, y equals f of x. Just by inspection, we can see that it gets its highest value at the far right endpoint, x equals 3.5. We're going to call that an absolute or global maximum. It's as big as the function gets on its domain. The maximum value of the function there is about 1.5. Similarly, we have an absolute or global minimum at about x equals 2.6 and the minimum value at that point is about 0.35. Now, looking at this graph, there's another sort of maximum and minimum that we can see. At x equals 1, we have what we call a local minimum. The graph is as small as it gets nearby x equals 1 at x equals 1. And similarly, at around x equals 1.4, the graph has a local maximum. The function doesn't get any bigger, in any vicinity of that point. So here are the official definitions. We'll move through them quickly because they don't get used too much in Calculus 1. A function has an absolute maximum at x equals c if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all values x in the domain. Similarly, for an absolute minimum, we just flip that inequality around. A function has a local maximum at x equals c if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all values of x nearby x of c. So not necessarily for all values x in the domain. Similarly, a local minimum if um, f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all values of x near c. Again, we don't use those very much. We tend to talk about extreme values in calculus 1 through the lens of the derivative. Let's move in that direction using another example. Find all local and absolute extrema of this function, y equals g of x, just using this graph. By the way, this graph is intended to have domain all real numbers, so where the graph um, of the function leaves the screen, you should imagine arrows and that the function continues. So the function has a local maximum of um, 3 at the value x equals 1. That's at that cusp sort of in the middle of the graph. Nearby x equals 1, the graph only gets smaller. However, this function does not have an absolute maximum. This function grows without bound as x gets bigger and bigger to the right. The function has a local minimum at x equals 3 and a minimum value of negative 1. That local minimum is also a global minimum. There is no x value where the function takes a smaller y value than it does at x equals 3. So we can make an observation based on this. Every absolute extremum is also a local extremum, but not vice versa. A local, a local minimum or maximum doesn't necessarily have to be an absolute or global um, minimum or maximum. Away from endpoints, there are really only two possible ways that a function can have a local extremum, a local minimum or maximum. And both of them are, are illustrated in this graph from the last example. First of all, the graph can have a horizontal tangent, and so a derivative of 0 at that local minimum or maximum. Secondly, the graph can have a cusp or corner, so the tangent line isn't defined, so the derivative does not exist at that local maximum or minimum. A point where one of these two things is true is called a critical point of the function, and the x value of a critical point is called the critical value. You should think of critical points as candidates for local extrema. Let's do a computational example. Find all critical points of the function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 4x to the third. So a critical point is going to be one where the derivative is either 0 or does not exist. So we need to find those values for this function. 
In this case, since we have a polynomial, the derivative is defined everywhere. We just need to differentiate and set equal to zero. In this case, the derivative is 4x to the third minus 12x squared. We set that equal to zero and solve by factoring. 4x squared times x minus 3 equals 0, and the solutions are x equals 0 and 3. These are the critical values of the function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 4x to the third. To find critical points, we just need to find the corresponding y values. f of 0 is 0, and f of 3 is negative 27. So the critical points are 0, 0, and 3 comma negative 27. These are the only points where this graph can have a local maximum or local minimum. Here's the actual graph of the function, and this raises an important warning. Critical points are candidates for local maxes and mins. They aren't guaranteed to be local maxes and mins. Here, at x equals 3, we do have a local minimum, and we can see from the graph that in fact it's a global minimum. However, at x equals 0, we have neither a local minimum nor a local maximum. Later on, we're going to need to develop a way to test whether or not our critical points are local mins, local maxes, or neither one. Here's another example. Find all critical values of the function f of x equals x to the 3 fifths times 6 minus x. Our process here is going to be exactly the same. We're going to differentiate, see where the derivative is 0, and where it's not defined. In this case, we need a product rule. We differentiate x to the 3 fifths and multiply it by 6 minus x. Then we differentiate 6 minus x and multiply it by x to the 3 fifths. So let's simplify this a little bit by factoring out the x that has the lower power. So I'm going to factor out x to the negative 2 fifths here. I'm left with 3 fifths times 6 minus x minus x. And the inside of that big parenthesis can be simplified immediately to 18 fifths minus 8 fifths x. Rewriting this whole thing as neatly as possible, 18 minus 8x over 5x to the 2 fifths. So we have two critical values. This uh, derivative is not going to exist when the denominator is 0, so when x is 0. And the derivative is going to be 0 when the numerator is 0, so when 18 minus 8x is 0, or when x is 9 fourths. These are our two critical values. Let's conclude by taking a look at the graph of this function to see what it's doing at those critical values. So at x equals 0, we can see that we have a vertical tangent line. Notice that this is the graph of a function. It does pass the vertical line test but it can also have a vertical tangent at x equals 0. And that's a candidate for a local max or min, even though it isn't a max or min in this particular case. Finally, we can see that other critical value there um, at 9 fourths. And in this case, we do have a local maximum for this function.